Welcome to worship. Isn't this fantastic? To be back in person in St Paul's URC this morning is an absolute joy. It would have been pure joy to celebrate Easter here, of course, but we are here now and this is pure joy too. And it's a spiritual high that's come on the day of Pentecost, the day the Spirit came, the day when the church was given its birth. So, hallelujah for that, it's fantastic. Great to be here and actually really emotional to be back in our spiritual home. And furthermore, at long last, we have the further pleasure of welcoming Naomi Baldwin into the church membership this morning. And that, again, is a great joy and it'll be a day for us all to remember, Naomi, thank you. So I call to worship. With the wind at their backs, the disciples entered Jerusalem, only to watch Jesus die upon the cross. It spiraled down so fast. Trial, torture, crucifixion, death. But on the third day, the breath of God blew new life into their futures and ours. They had 40 days with the risen Jesus. Before he ascended, Jesus reminded his disciples that the Spirit will come. We celebrate anew this morning that at Pentecost, the wind breathed into each and every disciple the spirit of freedom. Sacred breath, come upon us all this morning. Unlock a song within your people as we worship you today. So we have our first hymn, Awake My Soul.
Thank you, Encompass. Now will you join me in our opening prayer? Let us pray. O oh God of Pentecost, wake up our souls to sing a new song of praise to your power and your goodness. Breathe new life into us, a people for whom life has been a struggle lately. Breathe new life into the wonderful creation you have made. Revive and restore the wastelands. Wake up our souls to sing a new song, praising the freedom gifted anew to us by your holy and life-giving spirit. Breathe into us your hopes and dreams for a world filled with justice, worship, love and peace. Wake up our souls to sing a new song praising the freedom offered to us through the cross of Jesus. Help us to admit mistakes. Seek your forgiveness and live anew in the freedom of your grace and your mercy. And wake up our souls to sing a new song to your glory. Breathe your Holy Spirit into each one of us gathered here, in person and online. Fill us with power and purpose and enable us to walk the way of Jesus, this day and forever. Amen. And let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever amen we have our first reading it's from acts chapter 2 Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Lib 
uh, parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Amen. Thank you, Andy. Good morning. Buenos dias. Guten Tag. Bonjour. Mahalo. Shalom. In case you didn't understand a word of that, it's just saying good morning in different languages, of course. So it was good morning in English and Spanish, German, French, Hawaiian, and Hebrew. Few people can speak all those languages fluently. Most people need a translator in order to understand the languages of other people from different nations. One day after Jesus died and rose again, his disciples were gathered in a room in Jerusalem for a Jewish festival called Pentecost, when suddenly a sound came from heaven. It sounded like a hurricane and it filled the room and yet nothing was moving. And then flame-like shapes rested on each of the disciples. But they didn't get burned. Most amazing of all, the disciples started speaking in foreign languages, whilst actually they only spoke Aramaic. That sound of a wind from heaven like a hurricane was the Holy Spirit coming upon the first disciples. And it freed up their tongues to speak languages from all over the world. People from their homes and streets around all came running out to see what the racket was all about, what was going on. And Peter told them that God poured out the Holy Spirit just as God had promised. In the Holy Spirit, there is true freedom. And so, because we have that true freedom in the Spirit, amazing things can and do happen. And Peter told the crowds about his friend and saviour, Jesus. He wants to be yours and their friend and saviour too. And the Bible records that over 3,000 people believed Peter's message and became Christians and were baptized that day. An amazing thing and a wonderful day to celebrate. Let us sing again now. The Spirit lives to set us free. Thank you. 
next we have a reading from the second, the second Corinthians chapter 3. This reading comes from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image, with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image. That phrase, unveiled faces, has taken on a whole new meaning lately, hasn't it? Our freedom has been restricted to an unprecedented extent. In solidarity with the rest of public life and in order to keep people safe, many churches have remained closed for public worship until today. Many churches are opening up on this day of Pentecost, the day the Spirit came. We are now free from many, if not all, of the COVID restrictions. We're still not free to sing together indoors, which is one thing, one freedom we really ache for in the church. But we are free to resume weekly worship here in church, our spiritual home, and to embrace many other freedoms. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, we are free. The question is, free from what? And free to do what? two key questions to think about. We read in scripture that when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And today, as we celebrate Pentecost together, we have sufficient freedom, because the COVID numbers have gone down, to gather here together. We are together in one place. Uh, and those of us who can't be here today in person are here with us online, so we are together in a very real way. And as churches reopen for in-person worship, our focus can shift away from the question, freedom from what, to the key issue, freedom to do what. Listen very carefully. We may not hear a noise, a sound from heaven like a hurricane that's filling this space. We do have a, something like a flame. We may not be speaking in different languages. Nevertheless, the Spirit of the Lord is moving amongst us, all of us and urging us to embrace new freedoms and to move forward. At the most fundamental level, there is again now freedom to, freedom to do things. And that's the most basic quality of freedom, surely. No longer physically confined or constrained, free to make worship together free to make decisions, to speak of the hope that is in us, free to do mission for our Lord. Maybe the key post-Covid question facing churches like our own is the freedom to do what? During lockdown, many folk have resented the loss of freedom to come and go. I'm sure we've all felt a bit imprisoned at times. 
And we know too there have been many abuses of freedom during lockdown. Huge gatherings, illegal raves, all kinds of things. It's always good to remember that the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, kindness, goodness. It's been difficult sometimes to have forbearance when people are doing dangerous things that can put vulnerable people at risk. Paradoxically, some, while some folk are not yet yet ready to emerge from lockdown, others have found their time and their money freed up to do other things, such as helping others. As I was thinking about this, a phrase came to mind. Christ whose service is perfect freedom. I don't know whether it's a phrase that's familiar to you, it's words I've not heard since my time at college, actually. The phrase originated from St. Augustine, who wrote of the Master, whom to serve is perfect freedom. This is such a paradox on the face of it, isn't it? Many people live, think that if they serve God, they will lose their freedom. In fact, it is the very opposite. Living for ourselves, in fact, is a form of slavery. Serving God in the new way of the spirit is the way to find perfect freedom. Because the spirit set, lives to set us free from sin and slavery, sin and death. And this is the will of the Father for you and for me. Freedom from death, freedom from sin. The key to freedom is full dependence on God's grace. Those who follow Jesus live in the spirit of the Lord, where there is freedom. And this freedom is not only for us. The spirit of the Lord comes to liberate all God's children and all of God's creation too. All created life stands in need of liberation to live life in all its fullness. It is only in doing the work of service that we will ever truly be free. There is a cost to freedom. Living for ourselves alone, as I said, is a form of slavery. Conversely, Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Today as we gather together to celebrate Pentecost, may freedom be released in all our lives as the Holy Spirit's gift to us and to our church and as we serve God and neighbour through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And next, we have something very special in the life of our church here at St. Paul's. We will be welcoming Naomi into membership. And I'd like to invite Naomi to come forward, please. Just a, a brief word of explanation first. It is normal practice in the United Reformed Church to welcome new members during a communion service. However, Naomi's reception into membership was planned before lockdown, and so exceptionally, we are still not yet ready to have in-person communion services. However, we feel it is right, indeed wonderful, to welcome Naomi on this Pentecost Sunday, the day the Holy Spirit came. So we move now to, to do that, to welcome Naomi into membership. 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the only head of the church, and in accordance with the decision of this local church meeting, we now receive Naomi Baldwin into membership of this congregation of the United Reformed Church. By baptism, Naomi has been received into membership of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. She has affirmed her baptism, confessed her faith in Jesus Christ as her Saviour and Lord, and has accepted the privileges and responsibilities of membership of the Church of Christ. And we rejoice in the pilgrimage that has brought her to this place and this time. We give thanks to God for every community of faith that has nurtured her faith along the way and for her desire to join us in Christian faith and discipleship. As she comes to unite formally with us in this congregation, we invite her to reaffirm her confession of faith and, we, and to promise to live as a faithful member of this fellowship. So Naomi, do you confess anew your faith and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, maker of heaven and earth, giver of life, redeemer of the world? Do you promise to continue in the worship and fellowship of the church in this congregation, accepting the gift and the cost of following Christ, and proclaiming by word and action the good news of God in Christ? And a promise by the congregation. In welcoming Naomi as a fellow member in the life of our church, do you promise your friendship in the Lord, and will you give her your support in prayer and service so that she with us may continue to grow in the knowledge and love of God and witness to Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And with God's help, we will. Let us pray. God of grace, you call us to be your servant people and gather us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending Naomi to work with us in serving your kingdom. Confirm us all in the power of your covenant to live in your spirit, to love each other, and to share the mind of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the tricky bit, because at this point I would normally offer you the right hand of fellowship. And of course I'm not allowed to do that at the moment, so what I will do is one of those. <laughs> and one of those. And I'll invite, please, Margaret to come and greet you with the same problem I've just had. Welcome, Naomi. Uh, thank you for all you've done already in the fellowship. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the elders and the fellowship. And I hope it won't be too long before we can give you the right hand of fellowship. But in the meantime, I welcome you. Thank you. Naomi, there is your certificate of membership. And then may we welcome you in the name of Christ. And may we grow together in unity and be built up into the body of Christ in love, to the glory of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. It's always a joy to welcome new people into membership, isn't it? But she isn't new, <laughs> which is even more exciting. So let us pray together. Will you join me in our prayers of intercession? O oh God of Pentecost, we bring now our prayers. Firstly, we pray your blessing and an outpouring of your spirit upon our church. And especially today, we ask your special blessing upon Naomi. 
May she remember this as a very special day. May we all do the same. Unite us in Christian love and service. O God of Pentecost freedom, to those who are living under a cloud, bring light and the hope of freedom to come. And to those who are emerging into the light, bring the joy that new freedom gives. O oh God, to those who have hunger, give bread. To those who have bread, give a hunger for justice. To those who have thirst, give clean water. To those who have water, give a thirst for righteousness. To those who are ill, give healing. To those who are grieving, give comfort. To those who have war, give peace. To those who have peace, give a renewed call to be peacemakers. Pentecost God, loving, persistent creator, sustainer and redeemer. Thank you for risk takers for justice. Thank you for persistent ones who work for righteousness. Thank you for imaginative ones who call us back to the concerns of our hearts for the hungry and the thirsty and the war-weary. And Pentecost, God, thank you for never giving up on us. May we never give up on you. Amen. Which brings us to our final hymn. And Encompass are going to delight us again, and this time it's We'll Walk the Land.
and a blessing. Let us go out in the freedom and the power of the Spirit of the Lord to witness to the glory of the Lord. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon us all this Pentecost day and always. Amen.